his energy for practice. You know, I just think there's takers and there's givers. You know, takers, the people that you have to constantly motivate. I've said that for years. Great players you prepare. Average players you have to motivate all the time. Shaq, I've never, he loves the game, he loves to practice. You talked about how the, the interview process for free agency was different. You know, you didn't get as much face time as you wanted to, but with a guy like Shaq, None. was that not a, yeah, was it? <laughs> But with a guy like Shaq, was that not really? Boy, we hit it out of the park, man. I mean, uh, Roy, uh, and I'm not talking about, we're still to be determined, but you start talking about Ray, uh, Ray Jenkins, Shaq, Marvin Jones, Roy, Carlos, I know there's uh, Dorsett, um, I, I apologize, Man Hurts, I mean, plus, 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 plus. So we, we did good. We did a, a lot of that was a deep dive by our coaching staff, Trent and his staff. And me personally calling people, because once again, you couldn't meet with them. But we, we do. I like those guys. Those are good. Did you say you had a pretty good first day overall? I haven't had many bad first days. <laughs> we have a bad first day. <laughs> Ask me day 12. Hey, we'll see how it goes. Hey, Herbert, you talked about learning curve for yourself, getting a tackle. I mean, was the oh, fine during OTAs? Was that part of the, the learning process? And that's a yeah. pretty hefty. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I went. You know, I want to know what, what what was it. I actually thought we did a heck of a job. We gave them uh, every third day off. We, uh, you know, we had full attendance, so we we had a little different. You know, very proud of our guys. They love the sports performance model, and they sent us eight plays, uh, and the eight plays were defenders going after a ball. Uh, I want to say three times through you know incidental contact. The other times were so the adjustments we made. No press coverage right now. It was all off. And the deep really just, that's where most of the stuff was. So you talked earlier. Really challenging of DJ Chark this offseason to gain more weight. How have you seen him respond now four months later as we step out here for day one of training camp? DJ's great. He wants to, you know, I heard that someone said, how can you, you're challenging him. I mean, that's, that's daily. That's part of a coach's job. So uh, there's zero resistance. And if, you know, that's something that can make him better. And he's worked hard at it. He looks great. His body looks great. His strength has really improved. So. You talked earlier, very early on in your tenure, about you can't miss on this. Uh, based on what you've seen through four, five months, do you, do, you, do you think that this team is going to fulfill that? Yeah, it's so early. I think you evaluate each phase. Phase one and then phase two, uh, you know, that's early on. Uh, the number one thing I wanted to make sure we got done is the player safety and health, and I don't feel good about it. I feel great about it. Um, Shad Khan was uh, uh, good enough to give us what we need. We we built a whole brand new rejuvenation room for our players that was not here. That involves a cryo float tank, uh, cocoon, and uh, infrared, and that's and then we also made our trainers. I don't we don't say trainers anymore. We say experts. So. Taping ankles doesn't make you a trainer. Becoming an expert at deep tissue, cupping, uh, acupuncture, or dry needling, they call it. So it's full of experts now in there. And uh, that part was a A plus. Uh, now, there's only one thing, as I told our players, one thing worse than not having that stuff is not using it. So it goes back to the own it. Take care of yourself, man. This is uh, it's going to be a long journey here. So I like where we're at, but we all know we've got a long way to go. Thanks, Coach. Let's go. we got to go. We've got players. You got one? Yeah. Did you, did you get a lot of pushback or complaints from the, the DBs about no press coverage, not going after balls? No, because they saw the fine and they're, I think, the same reaction to play. A lot of them said they thought we had a great off season. And what was that fine? And then I showed them, the, we actually showed them the eight plays that they sent us. And there's, to be honest, about four of them, you're like, <laughs> you know. But rules are rules, and so we're going to follow the rules. That'll stop once you get the pass, okay? Pass. Stop like that. <laughs> Have a good you. day. Hey, DJ, what did you think of Trevor's first day? Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, I got a few reps with him. Uh, we connected a few times. You know, I can't give you too much detail because I really don't know who's throwing me the ball when I'm running routes. But the times I did notice, it was pretty good spirals, good passes. I saw him throw a, a deep post at the end for a touchdown. That was a nice ball, too.
What did, we saw you up at Clemson with him, a couple guys. What was that like? What does that do? You know, in terms of getting a head start on all of this. Uh, it, was, it was a great time. Uh, first off, you know, just building a new relationship, but also uh, seeing, getting used to his passes, him getting used to the way that we run routes because everybody runs routes differently. Um, working on timing, uh, seeing a routes that we like the best, uh, passes that he liked the best, seeing what he needs to work on, what we need to work on. So. Uh, it's pretty good, and plus, you know, in the off season, you need to just run, stay in shape. So it was good for a lot of different reasons. I know you guys haven't been able to do press coverage yet too much the DBs, but uh, what's your opinion of Shaq Griffin? What do you bring into this team? Uh, bring a lot of leadership, um, good, you know, mobility, able to flip his hips, break on passes. Uh, you know, I think this acclimation period helps the DBs a lot because it makes it tougher for them uh, having to shadow a receiver uh, but you know I think he's a solid uh, corner and it's good that we have him here. If you put the pads on and you're beating him do you feel like you can beat a lot of guys? I feel like that anyway <laughs> but yeah for sure. How was the pace of practice today for, compared to a you know, first day of, of camp in the past for you? Did, did you feel more up tempo anything like that? Oh yeah it's definitely up tempo uh, you know, it's the Florida heat, you know, and you got to bring a lot of energy, uh, you know, with this coaching staff. Uh, but it was good. You know, the beginning kind of, you know, wore on us, but I feel like a lot of guys caught their second win, and, you know, we know what to expect. Uh, so it was a good first day for us. How much discussion have the players had amongst themselves about the whole vaccination thing? Obviously, some players are still not vaccinated. Many are. I mean, how, how does that conversation usually go? Is it vaccinated, trying to convince the unvaccinated, or is it sort of a taboo subject that you sort of uh, don't talk about? I anymore? mean, you know, players ask for information, uh, which vaccine that you may have taken or things like that. But, you know, one thing I can say about our locker room, everybody adults, and, you know, it's your decision. Uh, so. I personally haven't tried to convince anyone to get it. Uh, I just know it's way easier throughout your day-to-day -day process having it. Um, but you know, if you're willing to take the extra steps um, that are required if you're unvaccinated, then so be it. Uh, personally, like I said, it's pretty easy for me to walk in, no mask, things like that, but teach is on. DJ, you mentioned that the coaching staff wants more energy, demands more energy. Is that welcome among those of you who have been here a few years? Uh, yeah, for sure, you know. It's something different, uh, we wanna win. If this is the way to win, that's what we're gonna do. And you know, that's the plan. So, uh, you know, let's do it. Let's see how it works. What kind of uh, impact does Marvin Jones have? You know, just on you, whether you know, the off season or Clemson or on the practice field. Um, he's a good guy to bounce questions off of. Uh, we are two different receivers, but anything that I could take from his game and add to mine makes me better. He's a very good contested catch guy. I um, feel like I'm pretty good at that as well. So I like watching his tape, seeing the things that he do. He's been in this offense before, so anytime that there's sound bites or anything that I don't know, I definitely ask him because he knows it. Uh, and he's also just a good guy to be around, uh, very cultured. Um, just a, a great guy. DJ, you driven by the idea of a contract out there? Uh, Not really. Uh, I'm pretty blessed right now. And uh, I have the mindset that, you know, I'm going I'm to be taken care of either way. You know, uh, I just put my faith in God, let that go. But I just want to get better and play ball. But like I said, I'm, I'm way light years ahead of what I was a few years ago financially. So. I'm all right, it's cool. Last one for you. Season. Do you feel different going in? in terms yeah, of my time. Added strength in the off season. Do you feel different? Can you feel that? Yeah, uh, I, I feel it also. Uh, just my, I worked on speed a lot. I feel the speed when I'm coming off the ball. That's something that uh, Coach Sanjay, Coach Meyer really, uh, you know, buckled down on. But I feel it uh, coming off the ball, come, getting in and out of breaks, you know, uh, just moving people around. You know, it's something good to add to my game as well as being shifty.
Thanks, DJ. Yeah, Thanks, DJ. DJ. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah. I understand that, 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 that you guys haven't been able to do press coverage yet, not in pads yet. But at this point, at the secondary as a group, what do you like about these guys? What are they doing well? Man, um, I just like how close we all got. You know, uh, you talking about going through OTAs. We get this little break, come back there and camp, and nothing changed. You know, everybody's still asking questions. Everybody's still trying to get close. Everybody's still trying to grant that that fellowship, that brothership. And I feel like that's awesome. You know, you go on the first day, everybody's still working hard. Everybody's still trying to learn more. And I think that's the coolest part. And we got some great rookies so far. You know, I know it's, it's a little early, so I want to see how they kind of plan now. You know, day one between day 14 could be a lot different. So uh, I'm excited to see how well they do. And uh, like I said, man, how close we're all getting as a group, that's awesome to see because we're going to need everybody. Jack, so obviously so much. Uh publicity out there with COVID making uh, somewhat of a comeback. What is your level of concern, if any at all, that this team will be able to get through the season without any kind of big surprise or sabotage coming yeah. your way through 17, 18, 19 weeks? Yeah, man, it's, it's kind of hard to say what could happen, you know, or what's going to happen in the future. We're not sure, but, um, you know, the main thing is we just got to be the most disciplined team. You know, uh, I've been on the team before that went through no COVID issues. You know, and that was the main thing about sacrificing more than what we need to to be able to get to where we want to be at, you know, at the end of the day, and that's to the Super Bowl. So, uh, like I said before, we need everybody, and uh, we got seven months to be as disciplined as possible. You know, the little extra curricular things outside of football, we got to be smart about it. We got to be safe about it. And, you know, um, I know that this vaccine thing that's going on, you know, it's, it's totally a personal choice. You know, when it comes to me being vaccinated, you know, as a, I had long, long talks, you know, with my parents, you know, who has been vaccinated, you know, and I do my research on it. You know, I would never tell somebody what they should do. But like I said, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't get vaccinated, we have to be smart as a team. And that's a discipline thing. You know, what do you really want to get out of it? You know, do you really care enough to be able to go, all right, I won't do as much. I will always wear a mask around when I'm not out, you know, and I, when I am, I'm going to continue to wear a mask. You know, I'm going to be disciplined enough to be able to get to whatever we need to get to. Like I said, that's to the Super Bowl. So we just got to be the most disciplined team. So, uh, you know, that's all us. That's all up to us. You know, and that's the continue the thing we're going to continue to preach. Let's be smart. Let's protect each other. We need everybody. So that's something that we're going to continue to preach. Your brother ended up on the schedule in London. When's the last time you guys played each other while not on the same team? Never. Never? Mm, never. Besides one-on-one -on -one in the backyard or racing somewhere in the street. But uh, yeah, I'm already talking trash. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You know, I told them uh, make sure y'all have your passports ready because I need you to make sure you make it. I need no excuse. And I told them I might walk up while he didn't warm us and push him down. So uh, yeah, I already started my trash talking. I'm not changing. So can't wait to see him. It's going to be different. It's going to be exciting to see. First time the Griffin Twins going against each other. So yeah, y'all make sure y'all blow that story up because it's only popping when I see him. <laughs> I think it was uh, DJ who said, hey, coach is going to kill us. Um, do you go into this thinking, hey, this is going to be a hard camp? This is going to be, and, and what are your expectations under Urban Meyer? Um, I haven't set any expectations at a time, but one thing I did preach, uh, actually, you know, uh, yesterday before we even started practicing, this is going to be hard. This is going to be tough. There's going to be days where, like, man, how are we going to get through it? Lean on someone. This is a brotherhood. Lean on us. If you're going through something, talk to me. If I'm going through something, I'm going to come holler at you. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to try to get whatever it is on my chest, try to get it off. We need everybody. And it's going way beyond just camp. You know, you're talking about having an extra game now. Like, you know, we're our season is going until January. And that's not even talking about playoffs. Like, we're going into January on our last game. That's a long time. You got rookies who is coming from, you know, college season. They're done around 12, no more than 14 games. Now you're going up to 20. Like, that's a long time, so it's going to be tough. It doesn't matter what you're doing. This football stuff is not easy, but you have to be able to lean on each other. So I'm already expecting whatever is going to come is going to come, but I want to give my all to it. You know, I accepted that. I accepted whatever comes with it, and whatever I got left in the tank, I'm going to give it. So how does July in Florida compare to July in Washington? And you said it was going to be tough. Do you expect it? Is it a little tougher maybe than you thought it might be to get back on the bike? Um, I wouldn't say tougher. The weather is definitely different. I thought my Florida blood would have kicked in. I guess not yet. I was in Seattle for a minute. But you know, eventually it'll kick in. I started getting used to it. You know, I'm talking to DJ. He said, yeah, don't get hotter. We didn't put on cooking yet. I was like, dang, you can't tell me that. <laughs> but uh, like I said, um, it's just something I gotta go through. You know, like I said, when I make that dedication and that sacrifice to me, I'm gonna give whatever I have to this game. I'm gonna give it whatever that looks like, I'm gonna do it. So I'm ready for you.
Jeff, you had really high praise of Trevor Lawrence day one of OTAs. How have you seen him grow from day one to where he is today? Oh, uh, actually, I seen him in the pads a day. It was just, it was so pretty. I remember sitting on the sideline with uh, Trey Henderson just talking. And I'm telling you, like, it's pretty hard. I said, you can tell when you really work because you go into OTA. Yes, yes. Good, but now it's about time to see. I think you see the videos that we're getting to see. We have to really work with each other.